So there's so many videos out there on skis. How in the world do you make an informed choice for you? So I'm gonna give you some thoughts on what I'm skiing on and hopefully some guidance where you guys can go. So you need to understand who I am. You need to understand my bias because everybody has a bias. I was a World Cup athlete. I was a World Cup ski racer. I understand in my world that skiing is a matter of inches. Skiing is a matter of hundredths. Skiing is a matter of very small incremental balance adjustments, tipping movements. And it's about precision. That's who I am. I like to carve. I like to rip it up. I like to be very intentional and accurate in my skiing, whether I'm in the bumps, powder, or on the groomer. So I really pay attention. A lot of you are that way. If you are a skier who is striving to become better, who is striving to improve their movements, who's really striving to learn about what skiing is, then I suggest you begin on a narrower ski underfoot. When, once you've acquired the skiing skills, then go wide. You've got the skills, go big. I would not suggest you go real fat and real wide underfoot if you're learning how to ski because the wider, softer skis potentially can hold you back in terms of developing your pressure skills, your edging skills, your steering skills. Gain those skills first then add that wider ski to your quiver. Because I tell you, that ski there in the powder is an absolute dream. That's what you want. The narrow underfoot performance ski is going to take you there quicker. It will help you improve your skiing quicker. Working on all the movements that I talk about in my videos, you're going to feel these movements with an 86 underfoot, an 84 underfoot, a 72 underfoot. I have some videos of some women who had a wider ski underfoot. It is the ski that was suggested to them when they went into the ski shop. They were happy, but I felt their skiing was being held back. I felt their skiing had met a ceiling. They could have worked on their technique forever, forever, forever. They would not get any better because of the ski they were on. So I put them on my RC1 here. Um, I put them on my Fisher, on, on my slalom race ski, and their head exploded. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Check it out. That's uh, super fun. I, you super just fun. now hopped on my skis. Our, our boots are the soles of the same. <laughs> that was super fun. I mean, that's actually more of an effortless turn. I mean, you're more active, but it just kind of carves. I mean. And you're, you know, you're a advanced skier. Advanced, not expert. Advanced. That was like performance. That was, that was okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna fun. follow you. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. As you ski on my skis, and don't go too fast. They're, all, they're my den. <laughs> Wow, your skiing is improved. <laughs> your skiing is so improved. Wow. I mean, <laughs> this is an example where Cheryl's ski was holding her back. Oh my gosh. Talk to me, lady. That is super fun. Now I understand how they can ski slalom. Yeah. Well, no, not I mean, wait one sec. Uh, have you heard me say that sometimes for some people their ski is holding them their back? Their performance back? Yes, I have heard that. And yes, <laughs> if you want to do a lot of turns and carve, a more better performance ski and not this fat stuff would be a lot better. And and have control. And a lot of control. Do you feel, feel super stable. A sense of control. Absolutely. And the skis bite. I mean, I would have been skidding on my other skis. So when it comes to ski choice, it is tricky. You go into a ski shop and you have the options available of what the shop is selling. You are dealing with a salesperson 
who has a particular understanding of what skiing is, maybe a bias of what skiing is, they may direct you someplace, okay? The point that I wanna make here is all of these skis are so good and so valid depending on what you're after. What tends to happen, especially for women, is you go into a shop and you can get a ski that is dumbed down. Could be quite wide, could be quite soft, and the ski is not necessarily going to meet you where you are at as a performance skier. The ski could actually hold you back a little bit. I was just gonna say that I could really, I felt like the ski was helping me out. Yeah. Like, yeah. as soon as I was turning, it so caught so much quicker than those. Um, I mean, can you on this ski become the skier that you want to be? No, not at all. I can have fun. I could do like some 180s on that, ski powder, go touring, but I can't be the aggressive skier that I'm aiming to get at. I mean, you're you're strong. Hello, <laughs> athletic, yeah. right? You want to power into it, right? Yeah, yep. I need yeah. something that's not gonna crush after I push into it. <laughs> yeah, you wanna you wanna screw the bumps, yeah. the groomers, you wanna roll it on edge, be athletic. Exactly. Yeah. So what I would like to say for all of you out there is don't let your ski hold you back. Okay? Get a ski that allows you to rise, allows you to perform, allows you to put some muscle in it, allows you to be athletic. So this is my quiver. If you guys know me well, you know that I'm not much of a quiver girl when it comes to skis. I've always just skied on this 68 underfoot, this World Cup slalom ski. That is not an everyday ski for everybody. It is really, really stiff. It is tough in the moguls. It is fun if you are a very, very uh, expert skier. It's not what I'd suggest for everybody. This RC1 right here lately has been my ski of choice for me. I absolutely love it. I can just rip it on the groomers. I can rip it in the moguls, in the powder, in the crud. It really is kind of the one quiver ski that's been my go-to lately. I really love it. A day like today, which is a powder day, for me, I'm gonna get in, out into the woods I'm gonna get away from the crowds and I'm gonna go with my Transalp. I'm gonna do a little bit of skinning. This thing is an absolute dream. It is so light. I'm a techie kind of person. The binding is just so high tech. The technology just blows me away these days. It's so cool. The Ranger here, this actually is last year's. Love that ski, I was at Taos a couple weeks ago. We had a foot. Then we had two feet. That 102 underfoot is the way to go. No question about it. It makes the powder easy. It makes the powder fun. That's how a powder day ought to be, right? Um, so I want to be clear. I have a loud voice. I have strong opinions. I have a bias. It's important for you to know where I'm coming from because there's a lot of opinions out there for you all to make an informed choice as you shop around. So I hope these thoughts help and uh, happy skiing. The powder, the bumps, the groomers, whatever you like. Catherine, you're 70. Yep. That is uh, a real performance ski you're on right there. Uh, that, some people would say that's real, a very aggressive ski. Uh, I know that the first time that I got on them, I uh, could feel them hook up and take me, and it was fun, and so I like them. Um, you can't be lazy on that ski, can you? Uh, no, probably not. I mean, you got to show up and think about your performance, think about your movements, is that right? I mean, you know, your technique. Uh, Especially if you're trying to um, develop any new techniques, okay. um, you really have to think about it. Um, but um, I think this ski helps me get more automatic in my movements um, quicker than... Some people, if you were to go into a ski shop, show up as a 70-year-old female, 
they would not necessarily steer you in the direction of that ski. And they didn't. Okay, what did they, what did they say you should be on? Uh, well, I don't even remember what they said or what the first ski was that they brought out, but I um, talked to them about um, how I was training and um, wanting to improve, and they said, well, then maybe we need to get you a, a more performance-type ski. Well, so, that's a response I like to hear. Yeah. That, that's good. But I had to convince them. You did. Yeah. Not everybody's going to necessarily listen to you. <laughs> well, I have, my husband is six foot two, and uh, he was with me, so he kind of um, helped influence too, I think. Oh, that's how things work. I see. Ha! <laughs> okay, that's good skiing. Bring back the turn, man. That's active skiing, foot to foot. But if Cheryl were to go to Europe, this is the kind of ski that you may find in Europe as a demo. Uh, we tend to find really fat skis here in the States for inbound all-terrain skiing. And I think for some people, they're a little like, 